Yes! Yes! Can you feel it? My amp unit! Wake up! Get up! Get amplified! Which means redeem! Go! Oh, BC probably already blew out another mic, man. I've blown out 10 mics in the last six months. That's why we had to bring in the heavy duty how you doing in the office studio. You guys see that mic, but we're not in the office studio. We're about to take a long trip, which means I'm on the lav mic and these things blow out. Which seems like every time I get amplified, which is a lot in a video. Which still amazes me to this day when people come in, they just discover the channel and they go, Wow, this guy's nuts. He's wild. <laughs> He's amplified. And the, it, literally the name is BC Amplified. I, I don't know what you thought you were clicking on. Fucking classic Beethoven music? Am I supposed to review Beethoven? Nah. BC Amplified, yeah, and we review professional wrestling, yeah, you with me? <laughs> and in the process, we blow out mics. Anyway, if I haven't blown this one out yet, welcome to the SmackDown 52121 review. Aleister Black, the future of WWE is black. This is what I call Aleister Black. Take two. And WWE cannot screw this dude up this time, man. There's no way WWE can screw this guy up because he has not built up that character equity yet. Like somebody, the likes of Bray Wyatt, for instance, right? Vince McMahon can try to book Bray Wyatt into the ground as many times as he wants, but Bray Wyatt's character is so good, and Bray is so good, and he's built up that equity with the fans that every time Bray comes back, he captivates again, even though the entire smart community says he's buried every time Vince does something stupid with his booking, Bray always comes back and gets holy shit chance, and you think, well, how is that, right? Fucking Niles Do Nothing was just saying he was buried a week ago. Seven days later, Niles Do Nothing is screaming, holy shit. That's what Bray will do, man. He's built up the equity. Alistair, we know what he's capable of, but Alistair hasn't built that equity yet. Vince gave him nothing on his first run. So you can't possibly screw him up a second time or this dude's finished. Literally, I'm telling you, I've been watching this shit enough decades to know when somebody's just done. And Alistair's too good to be done filthy like that. This is the time to do it. And this dude came back last night and he had somebody in mind. He went straight for somebody. Oh, we're going to talk about it. And this is right around the time that news broke that John Cena, and I broke this over a month ago, that this dude was ready to come back. Vince was just holding off. John Cena was holding off to live crowds, but news broke that John Cena is indeed coming back for the build to SummerSlam. Well, Alistair just came back. He's got a good first opponent that we're going to talk about for most likely Hell in a Cell. How do you build towards Alistair's SummerSlam opponent? Well, if you got Jonathan Cena coming back and he really wants to give back to the business, which is what he's claiming... If he really wants to do a job and put somebody over, if you build Alistair over the next two to three months and you put him in there with John Cena at SummerSlam and you have Alistair pull out a huge career-defining victory to really put him on the map, not just with the diehards that know what he's capable of, but the casuals that don't have a clue what this dude can do. If you did something like that at SummerSlam... Yeah, that's really helping finally build and create a new star, which is something we all agree needs to happen in that company. I'm just brainstorming here. The dude just came back last night. The news broke that Cena will be at SummerSlam this year, hours before, and BC put two and two together. One and one. 
The saying is two to two and two, but that's one and one. But I know it's one and one. I'm just saying the saying is the saying is two and whatever the fuck. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. You could do that shit. It's going to take time. It's going to take effort. It's going to take care to do something like Alistair and Cena. But whatever it is, even if it's not that, you got to build throughout the summer of 21. This is the biggest moment for Alistair Black in his career these next several months because it'll define Alistair Black. And it'll define if the company truly wants to build stars once again. Because Vince said years ago, we're not about making stars anymore because we don't want people to be larger than the company. Vince McMahon is scarred from people like The Ultimate Warrior and CM Punk, Phil Brooks, who once they get the upper hand, they start making all these wild demands and their attitudes change. Stone Cold, even our boy Steve Austin took his ball and went home when he didn't want to do the job to Brock Lesnar. Now, even though he was correct in not wanting to do the job at that moment to Lesnar, you still can't just go home. Right? And Vince is scarred by people like that. Warrior and Stone Cold and Punk. And he doesn't want to be in that position ever again. So now he handpicks people. In Vince's case, it's Roman Reigns. For five years, he tried to shove Roman Reigns down our throats as this top guy face. But it wasn't working with the fans. We said, turn this guy heel for five years. He was so damn stubborn. Joe comes back, says, nah, I ain't coming back unless you turn me heel. Because this has to be done for me, for you, for the company. And Vince finally gives in because Roman's telling him to do such. And what happened? We were right. Roman was right. This is the best Roman, one of the best characters we got in pro wrestling today. If you truly now are saying, all right, we realize why numbers have tanked. We realize why our fans are not as interested as they once were. We're going to build new stars. If you're serious, there's a guy right there, Alistair Black, who just debuted, re-debuted last night. Give him the fucking rocket, dude. Or you blowing smoke up everybody's ass. You got another guy, Keith Lee, scratching and clawing to try to get back. How do you fuck up Keith Lee? How do you screw this guy up? Don't touch a thing. He's gold. You want to build stars, the first step is to stop being stupid. We're going to talk all about it. Trust me. And Shinsuke Nakamura. This dude was paired up with Cesaro when Vince had nothing for him. And then they decide to give Cesaro a push. So poor Shinsuke gets thrown to the wayside again. Now, because once again, even after they split Cesaro and Shinsuke, they still didn't have something for Shinsuke. Now they put him with another dude last night. However, this combination could be a lot of fun. Oh, we're going to talk about it. Schmaz matches, fruit roll-ups. Mind-boggling booking. It's a WWE SmackDown. We got it all last night, May 21, 2021. And also, a main event that we have to talk about. We have to discuss this main event. Because, damn, it was so good. And, damn, so many problems because it was so good. We'll talk about it. And hold up. Before we end the cold open and go into the opening sequence montage, I gotta give a salute to my amp unit. We gotta start this weekend off the right way. Is this thing still on? Did I blow it out? <laughs> oh, you know where you are? You in the jungle, baby. You're gonna cry. Salute to my amp unit. What a kick-ass live stream we had just a couple days ago, too. Was that yesterday? Two days ago? Who the fuck knows? We have a lot of fun on this fucking channel. And you guys are rock stars on that last live stream. It was supposed to be a half an hour. We went over an hour and a half because we rock. Because we're the best professional wrestling group in the community. We are the amp unit. I am Professor BC. Class is in session. The coffee is cold. Ice cold. Salud! Amp unit, let's rock this the right way. <laughs> Red team, go!
Yeah, man, and a shout out to my New York Yankees, man. When this year started, I was like, all right, this is a trash year. Get rid of everybody. You know, as a fan, that's what we always say, right? Even our star players who you cannot get rid of. <laughs> you know, as a fan, we're like, get rid of them, you bum. <laughs> but we know, like, if they ever did, well, no, we didn't actually mean it, man. Um, but, uh, the Yankees have gotten back on track. We just got a no-hitter, but everybody is getting no-hitters because I told you guys, uh, in that last live stream, we talked a little bit about that no-hitter and the, 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 the balls are different, man. The seams are, are wider, better grip, and they just, they, they deaden the ball. So they tried to do this to try to curb all the home runs from last year. They thought there was too many home runs. So this year, the advantage is to the pitchers, but it's too much. MLB botched it, and now the pitchers are getting no hitters left and right. There's been like 21 so far, man, this year. <laughs> or a lot, anyway. Way more than there should be. So poor MLB. I feel so bad for them because th they keep botching. They can't get it right. There's too many home runs last year. The pitchers are getting too many no hitters this year. It's fucking insane, bro. So hopefully they get back on track as a, as a whole fucking league. But for my Yankees, man, I sat back and watched and loved Kluber getting a no-hitter a couple days ago. And then last night, we got something you don't see often, man. Once in a blue moon. In fact, it's been seven or eight years for the Yankees. 2014, I believe it was, since our last one. It's called the triple play. We got a triple play, man. Ball hit right to the third baseman, right to the second baseman to get the first guy out, and then to the first base to get the batter out. Boom, 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 triple play in the ninth inning, brah. In the ninth inning. Or was that the eighth? In the ninth, we had a walk-off. Maybe that's what it was. But we had a walk-off victory as well, so that was a fun game last night. And that was on during SmackDown. That's why I bring that up too, man. Uh, you, you talk about fucking... Channel change in McGee, man. I, I was like fucking uh, John Wayne back in the day. I was like Clint Eastwood, man. I'm boom, 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 boom. I was fucking flicking left and right because I could not miss a second of SmackDown because I had to get the details for you guys, man. And I will never, when this red light goes on and I get in front of this camera, I will never come without my facts, without my research being done, uh, without the truth being spit, man. You guys deserve the very best in this community, and that's what I'm going to offer every time, or I'm not going to get in front of this fucking camera. So, shout out to my Yankees, though, man. What an awesome couple of days with the no-hitter and then the triple play. Fuck, man. I got my Yankee Oakleys on, man. These are my special edition Oakley. You guys know I collect Oakleys. Some people have shoe collections. I have Oakley collections. Go figure. I don't fucking know. It's just something I picked up every time I go on vacation or anything. I, I, I get a pair of Oakleys. Um, these are official Yankee Oakleys. They're really cool, man. They got the Yankee, uh, logo. It's like in embedded into the actual lens. It's really cool. You have to look really closely to like see it. I mean, there's no way you could see it from here, but th they're fucking badass, man. Yankee Oakleys. Um, Oakley does a lot of things now with, uh, sports teams, not just baseball. So I also have, uh, uh, Packers Oakleys, official Green Bay Packer NFL Oakleys, man. How cool is that? So my point is, whatever sport you follow, see if your team, uh, if your team has official Oakleys and get them, bitch. These are the Oakleys are the, they're not paying me, but I don't do sponsors and all that shit. No, no, I don't do the whole, I don't do that whole game. I don't need to be fucking sponsored by, I'm sponsored by pure sheer amplification. Caffeine, not Duncan, caffeine, that sponsors me, how, how you, how's that? Hey, just want to give a shout out to my Yankees, man, an exciting couple of days with the no-hitter and the triple play. I know, <laughs> you always have that person. Basically, I came here for wrestling and for two minutes I heard you talk about your Yankees. Just so you know, I will not be returning to this channel. You just lost a subscriber. Fuck you, th th get out! What were you doing here in the first place? This is a no bitch boy Brayden, no crybaby Karen policy on this channel. How the fuck did you get in it? Get out! Internet bitch slap! Can you tune in to a BC review? You're tuning in to hang out, chill, shoot the shit. The major topic? Pro wrestling. If I feel like going off the fucking left field with a hockey stick, I'm gonna go into left field with a hockey stick. I love, people feel to tell me 
Like, the day just got gloomy because they, they left the channel. Basically, just so you know, I'm leaving the cha- I'm unsubscribing. Oh no! Whatever will I do? I only have thousands more! Who are not bitch boys! <laughs> not crybaby Karens! Oh no! What are we gonna do? Dipshit Dugenheimer just unsubscribed! Whatever is the channel gonna do? How will we get through this? Oh yeah, let's conduct business as usual. And we'll bring in 20 to 30 more fucking subscribers within the next fucking hour. How's that? We'll take one bitch boy out and bring in 20 badasses to the channel. Only badasses can subscribe to this channel. It's simple. People that can take the truth when it comes to pro wrestling. All brands. You cannot be sucking the how you doing of your favorite company. You can't be straddling Vince McMahon and WWE's right tit. You can't be riding high on AEW's cock. You can't be stroking and straddling impact. You gotta take all companies and talk and spit that truth. We have to factually, firmly fairly dissect these products. It's the only way pro wrestling is going to get better. If you can't handle truth, if you want to speak more in opinion and not fact, this isn't the channel for you. The good news is there's a thousand other people trying to do what BC's doing on this platform. And there's a reason. There's a reason they're just not going anywhere. Not even a little bit. People see through bullshit, bro. On this channel, we accumulated thousands of people when the tube didn't allow us to, but we still did. When the tube is taking subscribers off without anybody knowing about it, I still to this day have my tried and trues telling me they've had to resubscribe 12, 15, 20 times. And no matter how much the tube is trying to suppress us, keep us down, make sure we don't grow because we're too controversial, we keep growing, dog! For every bitch boy Brayden that takes off, 20 badasses come in. Uh-oh, I just spent another two minutes making bitch boys cry. Now, now I will begin the review. How's that? And you're lucky I got a road trip to do in just a bit. Otherwise, I'd stay here another two hours just to make the bitch boys bitch some more. <laughs> I'll start talking about the weather. I'll start talking about my 95-year-old grandmother who's still rocking and still more badass than you, bitch. But for my tried and trues, man, my, my amplified unit, my La Familia, my people, I'm going to start the review. But only for my people. Show starts with all of SmackDown's champions top of the ramp. Sonya Deville introduces them as if we have no idea who they are. What the fuck are we doing? What are we doing here? The champions are lined up. Like, this is the Hall of Fame at WrestleMania and all the Hall of Famers are like, And Sonya's like n calling them out and I'm like, most of these people have not even been champion for more than a month. I, I, I mean, Bianca Belair, maybe a month. Didn't she just win it last month at, at Mania? Apollo, maybe a couple of months? Dominic and Ray just got it, I think, like last week. Who else was up there, man? Who else was it? Uh, fucking... Oh, the tag champs. Naya and, uh, no, uh, Natty and Tamina. But didn't they just get it last week, too? So, I mean, what are we doing? We're treating them like they're fucking royal champions. None of them have held it more than... Apollo has not had it for six months, correct? No, maybe a couple months tops. And he's the longest reigning champion up there. So anyway, Sonya's naming them as if nobody's ever heard of them. And Sonya says this is an extra special SmackDown. And that earlier in the day it was announced that in July, next month... Oh, no, well, what is it, May? Almost a month, month and a half from now. Uh, July, WWE will be leaving the Thunderdome and going back on the road. So, big news there, obviously, and that's why you're starting to hear John C. Right, they're really going to try to sell tickets now, man. Now they're going to start to semi, just a little bit, just a little bit. Listen to the audience, right? 
but only a little bit because Vince is too fucking stubborn to actually listen to what needs to be done and changed. But anyway, Sonya announces all the champions. She announces that they're, they're going back on the fucking road. She then introduces one last champion, the Roman Reigns, the champion, because he wasn't up there with everybody else because character-wise, Roman's up here and everyone else is below him, right? So I thought that was beautifully done. So, but instead of Roman coming down, it was actually Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman comes out. He looks back at everyone. He calls everyone... Every one of the champions on the stage, he calls them title holders, not champions. There's only one champion, he says, and that's Roman. I love that, man. This is so true in WWE. This is not shade to all those champions. I mean, you guys know how much I love Bianca Belair and how much respect I have for, for Rey Mysterio. And, and I'm glad Apollo is getting this chance. And But they're title holders. They're just holding it. Because in WWE, all those titles, you, you play a game of hot potato with them. It's just, who's next? They don't feel like champions. The titles don't even feel like championship titles. So that couldn't have been more true by Paul Heyman when he called all of them title holders, not actual champions. I fucking love that. And then Paul just leaves. Paul Heyman just leaves, man, and Bailey hits the ring. Uh, out of nowhere, pissed off that she's getting no recognition. So she's calling out Belair and says she wants a rematch for the championship. Belair isn't one to back down from a fight. So Shayna, who again was up there with the Hall of fucking Champions, Shayna comes to the ring and Shayna Baszler. And first of all, Bailey wanted nothing to do with Belair when she got to the ring. Bailey's like, no, not right now, though. I on my time. <laughs> so I thought Bailey played that beautifully. And then Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax hit the ring out of nowhere and take out Belair. Then Tamina and Natty, who are up at the stage, they come running to save Belair. Uh, and that was a failed attempt. And then we go to commercial because all three of those ladies were being beat down by Baszler, Nia, and Bailey. So th this was just pathetic, confusing, and nonsensical. It was a pile of shit to open a show. It just was, man. When, when it went to commercial, you knew what we were getting when we come back. And that's what I always tell you guys. You can't do that. To, to make a TV show that everybody cares about, you have to make people care about it, right? There's a crazy concept. To get people interested, you have to make people interested. Wait, what a crazy concept that BC just came up with. I told you a winning formula in pro wrestling. After watching for decades, I've seen what works and what does not. When you start the show with a captivating, interesting way that is going to keep viewers tuned in throughout the show because they have to see what happens with that main storyline. That's how you start a show and you keep going back to it throughout the night. So at the very jump, they're putting the remote down. Even if the Yankees uh, maybe will throw a no-hitter. Maybe you'll see another triple play, but you have to put that remote down because WWE has captivated you in that very first segment, and you keep going back to the main storyline, and at the very end, you have a culminating moment that is called a cliffhanger. It's so big, you're talking about it. When the show goes off there, the next day you're talking about it, and you have to tune in the following week. Not want to, you have to. That's what they used to do all the time in pro wrestling. Cliffhangers. And the cliffhanger was so special because you started to show off with that storyline in such an epic, intriguing, captivating way. This is the opposite. This was a fucking circus. They're just parading around title holders. Bailey's jumping in the ring, calling out Belair. Belair says, okay. Bailey's like, not right now. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, Nia and Shayna hit the ring. Tamina and, Na um, Tamina and fucking Natty, yeah, are best friends with Belair all of a sudden. Or they still have some beef with Baszler and Jax, I guess. So they come to the ring. We go to commercial. And every wrestling fan that's been watching wrestling for even the last six... You could have been watching pro wrestling for just two months. And you already know what's going to happen when we went to commercial. You knew when we came back, we were going to have a holla, 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 play a six-woman schmoz match. Because that's what WWE does. That's what Vince McMahon does. It takes no care, no effort, no thought to just throw a bunch of people in the ring together and say, just do things, do things. You can wrestle, you can drink a cup of coffee, just do things, eat up 10 minutes. 
And how we got there was just so dumb. Calling out. Calling out all the champions like we've never heard of them before. Come on, man. And when we came back, sure enough, it's a schmaz. So I'm not spending much time on this at all. But a couple of things that I did like in this some bitch. Number one, Tamina keeps looking better and better in that ring. I saw confidence last night and she was just firing. I love it. Just believe in yourself and go full throttle. You may botch from time to time, but it'll look a lot worse when you botch in hesitation. And you guys know what I mean, man. We've seen it a lot, and I, I don't want to throw shade, but people like Lana, and we've seen it with Mandy, and so many times with a Dana Brooke, and so many others, where they're not confident. They're hesitating so fucking much, and they botch on top of hesitate because when you hesitate a lot, it's showing lack of confidence. When you don't have confidence, you're going to botch no matter what. It's the same thing as driving on the road. When you see that son of a bitch on the road that's going 10 miles below the speed limit, the limit is 45 and they're going like 30, 25 in a 45. You think, right, at the surface, you want to think, oh, they're going extra slow to be more cautious. The funny thing is, not so funny, they're the ones that are going to cause more accidents. They're the ones that are still going to make a huge botch mistake on the road. The person that is not driving, the person that is driving well below the limit, they're going to cause way more uh, accidents. It's just, it, that's factual statistics. It's sad. And it's the same thing in anything in life, especially pro wrestling, man. Especially pro wrestling. When you hesitate, when you don't have the confidence, you're going to botch even more. I love Tamina last night. She was just going at it, brah. Sip of coffee. By the way, I'm not that surprised that the slow car statistics are pretty fucking high when it comes to accidents and shit because it makes sense. If you're, if you're that hesitant on the road and you're that below the limit, you're ruining the flow of the road and that's going to cause a lot of botches and, and mistakes and accidents. Well, it's the same thing in pro wrestling. If you're in there and you got to... You got to have chemistry. You have to gel. You have to orchestrate. You have to flow with the other person. It takes two to tango, two to dance. And if you're off pace and you're not confident and you're slowing down, you're bringing the others that are in the ring with you, you're bringing them down, man. And then they start fucking up and it's a pile up. I remember back in the day, the thing to do on Friday nights when I was a kid, I'm talking like middle school, was to go to the local roller skating rink. Does BC look like somebody who rollerblades? No. But you had to go there if you wanted to go out with your crush, right? All the cutie girls were there. That's where everybody was hooking up. It was the place to be, so BC had to show up. But if you were one of those people that hung on to the rails the whole way around because you couldn't rollerblade, right? And, and, and every once in a while, you'd venture out. What would happen is you would cause a pile up. I can't tell you how many times BC tried to venture out from that rail, right? I took my hand off the rail and I tried to be brave because I always had confidence. And I'd go out and I'd be taking 10 people down with me. I remember this one Friday night, I had about 60 people. I don't know how. It was like a traffic pile up on the highway. But we were all just back to back to back. BC tries to venture out. I fucked up. I botched. I fell. Took four people down. Four became 14. And before you knew it, 60 human bodies were on top of me. And BC was down there like the catering crusaders were trying to get the fruit roll-up championship. I'm trying to squeak out. And I did, too. I got out. I turned around. And literally everybody was still on. Because it's not easy to get up. Everybody's on rollerblades. When you have 60 people on wheels, 60 kids on wheels, they can't just get right up. So it was pretty bad, man. I would look back and I'd go, oh, fuck, man. I'd look over at my crush, Natalie. And, I, you know, on that particular night, I couldn't see fucking Natalie. Come to find out, she was toward the bottom of the fucking pile. Yeah. Needless to say, I didn't get a chance to go out with Natalie for another three months. Three minutes of fucking begging. I had to, I had to fucking... It was, it was, uh, I, I owed a lot to fucking Natalie to try to get that date. <laughs> it was a lot of fucking, it was a lot of sucking up. A lot of I'm sorry's. <laughs> but my point is, in anything in life, man, if you're too hesitant, if you're too cautious, if you just don't have any confidence at all, you're going to fuck shit up, not just for yourself, but for others. So my point is, Tamina is fucking on a whole new level of confidence, man. You see this match last night. She was just fired. She was going for it. This is not the Tamina I've seen in the past. Give me more of that 
and I'm okay with Tamina. There's a fire in her I didn't know existed. Fucking awesome to see her getting better and better every week. This is all I ask from people. If you're there for fucking years and you show no improvement, please get the fuck out. Because people are losing their jobs like Mickey James. Even Chelsea Green, who never even got a chance on the main roster. Why are they losing their jobs when people have been there for years and not improving? Tamina is starting to improve. That's the first thing I liked in this Schmaz match. The second thing was they actually had Shayna Baszler win this match for her team. Who the fuck tied up Vince McMahon in this match? All right, we had a change in plans. The camera just blew out. Literally blew out. I don't even know if you guys can even hear me right now, but we're going to finish this damn review one way or the other. I may just flip out for the next 20 plus minutes for no reason. Just to find out it never recorded. But we're going to finish this damn thing because we finish what we start, damn it. But I did in fact blow out the camera somehow. Who knows, man? When we get amplified, we break shit. It's just what we do. As long as you guys can hear me, I am committed to finishing this damn review. So I believe I left off with Shayna Baszler winning that match. Tapping out Natty. Who tied up Vince McMahon? Does anybody know where Vince McMahon even is to let Shayna win a match? You talk about once in a blue moon. I hate seeing champions lose, man. And Natty right now is a champion. But right now, Shayna Baszler picking up W's trumps Natty winning a match because she's a champion. Shayna Baszler needs to pack up W's more than Pac-Man eats those damn cherries. Next was something absolutely hilarious to me. They showed Shinsuke Nakamura going about his entire day with King Corbin's crown. Driving in a convertible with the crown. Drinking coffee with the crown. Holding his awesome orange tabby cat with the crown. <laughs> Shinsuke was fucking awesome in this role, man. I love these little tidbits. Corbin is now middle of the ring pissed off. Eric Buganagan, or Rick Bugs, Rick Boogs, who knows, this guy has changed his names more times than Meta World Peace. Does anybody remember Meta World Peace? <laughs> so Rick Boogs now, I believe, is what he's going by. NXT developmental talent. He's jamming out on the electric guitar at the top of the ramp. And he plays Shinsuke out. Nakamura comes out and we have a, a rematch. We have Corbin versus Nakamura again. Now Nakamura hits the awe-inspiring, ultra-devastating Farouk roll-up on Corbin. And you know when that epic finisher is hit, nobody in BC means nobody is kicking out of that son bitch. Shinsuke defeats Corbin. Now, Corbin just beat Shinsuke recently in their 45th match. Now, Shinsuke wins this match. This is 50-50 booking at its fucking worst. Nobody wins here. But I will say, just like Natty tapping out to Baszler earlier, don't like champions being beat, but Baszler winning trumps everything else at this point. Well, in this situation, I can't stand roll-up finishes. But Shinsuke winning a match... Trumps everything else at this point. Shinsuke needs W's. Just a fact. So beggars can't be choosers. I can bash this shit. Till the cows come home till we're blue in the face. At least Shinsuke, just like Baszler, they actually picked up W's last night. Unfortunately in this company, you'll see them both losing again next week. Because it's 50-50 booking into irrelevancy. That's what Vince does. And again, Shinsuke riding around in his convertible with the fucking crown, drinking coffee, chilling with his cat with Corbin's crown. That made BC LOL. And when you can make BC LOL, well, fuck, maybe you're on to something. And maybe this Rick Boggs, Rick Boogs, Rick Bugez, <laughs> whatever Vince wants to call him next week. Maybe this combination with Shinsuke, maybe this is going to stick. It was kind of cool seeing them together. Maybe they're on to something. I don't want to give them too much credit until I see consistency, 
but maybe just a little bit? <laughs> Hour number two begins with Roman Reigns. Roman tells Paul to celebrate him. And Heyman completely kisses Roman's ass for the next three minutes straight. Paul is a genius. This was a subtle but sweet segment that really just makes Roman look so prestigious. And Paul Heyman is the perfect dude to pump somebody up like that and build them up to such a spot. It ended up being just a lead-in for the continuation of Rollins and Cesaro's feud. Cesaro came down the aisle in a sling and challenges Roman to a match at Hell in a Cell. A rematch. Roman says, cut this bum's music off. <laughs> Roman is awesome, man. Roman said, cut this bum's music off. Cesaro's like, bum? What the fuck? Rollins then attacks Cesaro and delivers three, not one, not two, but three stomps, absolutely destroying Cesaro. And I do mean destroying Cesaro, man. Michael Cole kept screaming out, look at his eyes, they're wild eyes, Pat. Pat McAfee is like, yes, Michael, I see it, they're wild. <laughs> now backstage, man. Rollins was pure fucking sheer genius, man. Rollins stops the EMTs who are rolling Cesaro out on a stretcher. And Rollins starts screaming, this is all on you. This is your fault. Why do you, why do you do this to me? Why do you do this to me, Cesaro? Why? And he steps back and he's got the, the wild eyes again. <laughs> so I like this, man. Little layer of Rollins. Some amplification. And you guys know, man, I love when pro wrestlers get amplified. I grew up in a time where that's what made pro wrestlers larger than life. And that should be not a lost art. It should still be practiced today. When I think of larger than life, man, I'm thinking about the wild amplified characters. Hogan's promos. Warriors, Savages, Pipers, Ric Flair's, Austin's, they were amplified, you know? And now today you see almost every fucking wrestler, they're just like talking, just shooting the shit. Oh, I'm going to beat you Sunday because I am the best in the world, right? Everybody just says the same shit. Everybody is a carbon copy of one another. Where's all the larger than life characters that are such individuals? Shit that you're like, damn, that's unique. Damn, that's awesome. Damn, I want to be like that. There's none of those anymore. How many, I, and this is not shade. I like these dudes. I really do. The dudes I'm about to name. But are you really going to go, I want to be like Adam Cole. If only one day I could be larger than life like Adam Cole. If only I could be like Murphy. <laughs> if only I could be like Mustafa Ali. One day I just, I just want to be like Ricochet. I, I mean, again, great talents in their own right. And they check off boxes in the pro wrestling world. And I want to see great careers for them. It would be nice in WWE. Don't hold your breath with Vince. So it's not shade, but larger than life? Man, I can look at 95 plus percent of these rosters today. And I'm not seeing it. So it's cool that Rollins can now tap into that amplification. It's cool to see somebody like Tamina gaining confidence and whooping ass finally. I'm starting to see a lot of amplification in, in a lot of people. Even the Street Profits, I want to give some props to them. They had a backstage segment uh, pumping up a possible match with the Usos next week. I say possible because Roman Reigns doesn't want to allow Jay to participate. But the Profits, man, I got to give them props because it was a lot less humor and more intensity and seriousness in their promo. And that's the shit I like. Evolve to get better. If you're just average, if you're just mediocre, if you're just getting by with some cheers then you should be questioning every fucking second of the day, what can I do to become better than average and mediocre? And even the profits, man, I felt really up their game up last night. So I'm starting to see a lot of individuals in that company start to change shit and get better. And I'm loving it, man. Never rest on shit. The product sucks for a reason. I'm not saying everybody's not going out there and giving, gi giving what they think is their best and busting their ass. But it's not working. It starts with Vince McMahon. Trust me, it always starts at the fucking top. But you got to ask yourself, can I be doing shit to catapult my own success? 
Sometimes it's as simple as tweaking shit within your own character, man. Seth Wild Eyes Rollins. I'll take that type of amplification for sure. Uh, next time, by the way, man, I stepped outside too. Ever since my camera blew, I stepped outside because I was just fucking heated, man. I didn't know what's wrong. I still don't know what's wrong with the fucking camera. Perhaps we'll find out. But we're kind of just taking a stroll, shooting the shit, screaming about pro wrestling. Anybody within a 15 mile radius of BC right now is probably scared shitless, calling the fucking popos. There's a wild man! BC Wild Eyes Amplified, he's screaming right now in the neighborhood. <laughs> so anyway, man, I don't even know if you guys can hear me. I could just be screaming for another fucking 15, 20 minutes and it's just for people to get scared. I have no idea, but I'm going to keep going, man, because if this is actually recording, then at least you guys got to hear my thoughts on last night's SmackDown. Budaga, Budaga! Dominic Mysterio defeats Robert Roode next via the Frog Splash. Sucks that Robert Roode is dropping these types of matches and so quickly, but this is one of those nights where I was taking what good I can get out of this company. <laughs> at least the champion didn't lose in this match which was, of course, Dominic, and the finish wasn't a fruit roll-up. So I'll take it. Small victories, people. Baby steps with this company sometimes. <laughs> Let me get a swig of coffee. Hold on. All right. Hold on, man. I'm trying to get my fucking... I'm outside right now, man. I got fucking birds flying around my fucking dome piece, people looking at me all funny. I got fucking notes I'm trying to juggle with my coffee. Also trying to get my fuck. I still got the camera, which is recording, hopefully. Um, what else, man? I want to also give props to... Let me check my notes, make sure I'm not missing anything that I wanted to give props to. I thought there was something else. Yes, Pat McAfee, man. I want to give props to McAfee. Um, once WWE announced that they were hitting the road this summer... I, actually, I think they re-announced it in the second hour... Uh, Pat McAfee just started flipping out in excitement. Cole could not contain him. This dude is great, and WWE scored a goal mine with him. If they lost Pat McAfee, this company has zero hope going forward. I'm telling you right now, you cannot lose Renee Young and Charlie Caruso and Mauro Ronaldo and then Pat McAfee and, and, and have people take you seriously as you hire dudes like Adnan Verk. Stop it, dude. Nobody is going to take you seriously at that point. They, they, I, mean, I mean, they landed, we all landed a gold mine with Pat McAfee. Now, Pat McAfee would do this. If I'm Pat McAfee and I have such a successful podcast and I know what I'm capable of and I can make money in any realm of entertainment, I'm not choosing WWE right now. I don't need to be yelled at by Vince McMahon for two straight hours every Friday night. But Pat McAfee decided to do it. So, we all are the benefactors. So, they better not fuck this up, man. And, and, and Michael Cole, man. Michael Cole stands up a lot of times. If you see Pat McAfee, he gets so amplified that he stands up and starts shouting during matches. He can't contain himself. He can't sit down. And if you ever saw his podcast, he stands up a lot because he's so excited and so amped. I love that in an individual. I was just talking about Seth Rollins like that, man. And, and even Tamina. When people get amped up, I love it. Fuck being yourself. Being yourself is boring. Get amplified. And all getting amplified is, is taking yourself and turning it up to 10. Turn that volume up. See what you're really capable of. And, and, and to see Michael Cole stand up with McAfee, man, that doesn't just show support for the new guy. It doesn't just say, hey, man, I'm going to be right there with you, man. You want to stand up? I'll stand up. If you get caught up on something, you're not alone. I'm right there with you. So Michael Cole, mad props for being right there and matching McAfee. But Michael Cole, I feel Michael Cole is getting more amplified. <laughs> I feel this is the best Michael Cole we've been seeing or hearing, I should say. And seeing him fucking jumping up with McAfee. I think this just benefits everybody, man. What a team. Now we have to do something with Adnan Verk because that is making Raw even worse than it originally was. But I wanted to give a shout-out to Pat McAfee in just his first few weeks. This guy is hitting grand slams consistently. Uh, the main event was a multi-man schmaz for the IC title. Kevin Owens, Apollo, Sami Zayn, and Big E in a fatal four-way. 
for Apollo's aforementioned IC title. This was 25 minutes, so you're talking pay-per-view time. And I told you guys, I tell you all the time, title matches today need to be longer. It's not like back in the day when you could have a fucking five-minute title match and people would be talking about it. Times have changed, man, and title matches have to be lengthy because you gotta let shit breathe now more than ever. Every match is just a spot fest. Every match is just, oh, let me set up this and that. And you sit there for this and that. And then you and all 20 of you stay on the outside and wait for me to do a flip. And I'll land on all 20 of you and it'll look absolutely ridiculous. And everyone's like, okay, we'll all catch you. Come on, brah. At some point, somebody has to stop and say, this isn't pro wrestling. We have to sell. We have to use more psychology. We have to tell an actual storyline. I understand they're more athletic than ever before. And it's more fast-paced these days. But sometimes you got to let shit breathe. You have to tell that story. You have to use that psychology. You have to sell. And title matches are those times. And today, now more than ever, you have to have title matches that are at least over 15 minutes. And that's the starting point. But they should be 20, 25. You should be giving us memorable fucking classics more than we get. It's not like no hitters where you can only have a couple in a fucking season to make them special. We should be getting 15 classics a year from WWE. 15 a year. With the talent that we have today... But no, man. So we get a fucking schmaz match with four individuals. They actually gave them the fucking time. It was a train wreck. I'm not going to lie. I'm sure easily you could say it was exciting. You could easily say you enjoyed it. You could say it was a fun match. You could say it was a great match. And I'm not going to fucking dog you for it. I totally see where you're coming from. It was action-packed. As an old-school fan, I would have liked more selling opportunity moments. I would have liked more psychology. I would have liked more shit to breathe, especially if you're giving them 25 minutes. But with the commercial breaks, they tried to stuff a lot in. No matter how you feel about it, this should have been at a pay-per-view. This is what pisses me off about the company. They put too many title matches on their television shows to try to pop a rating, but it never pops a rating. If this pulls in over 200,000 more viewers than last week, I would be shocked. I don't see it happening. So you didn't pop a rating. Every single time they do this, they never pop a rating. Or it's very minimal above what they pulled in the last week, which means... You could have easily saved these type of matches for pay-per-views. And in the process, you're making the pay-per-views feel more special. You're making the championship match more special. You're making the title more special. But by parading it every fucking week on every show, these championships defended on actual TV shows, it's making the pay-per-views not must-see. It's making the pay-per-views irrelevant. They got to stop this shit. I could see if it was popping ratings all the time, but it's not. Fans are showing you. Fans are telling Vince it's not working. AEW, the same thing. Just a couple weeks ago, they had three title matches and they lost viewers. But what is that telling you? You're going to need more than just parading title matches. You have to give people a reason to care. If people don't care about the title or the characters in the title match then they're not going to tune in. These shows should be built to a title match, and the title match should happen at the pay-per-view. But these shows, these are supposed to be used for building toward a title match. Instead, we're just getting title match after title match after title match every show. And if you're doing that, you're not building any storylines. So at the pay-per-view, all we're going to get is rematches. You don't believe me? Look at what WWE does. This is the vicious cycle that they've been in for years give it all away on TV, they have nothing for the pay-per-view, so we get rematches. Or we get triple threats, fatal four ways, five ways, six-pack challenges, you name it. It'll be a schmaz. I've done my research and I don't forget my past history, man. This is Vince McMahon 101 booking and it's got to come to an end. So as much as I saw a lot of good things in this title match, it also pisses me off. There's also a lot of problems that rise from matches like this on live TV because the pay-per-views, the most special events of the year, now that there's only 47 of them every year, (laughs) or at least that's what it seems, 
You know, those events are now meaningless. That's what they're rendered. Even the top ones, man. Royal Rumble is now meaningless because Edge, who just won this year, they showed you that you don't necessarily get one-on-one matches with the champion of your choice after you win the Rumble. They just added Daniel Bryan in because he bitched and complained. So even the Rumble match is rendered meaningless. At any moment, they can change that. Pay-per-views don't mean shit anymore. WrestleMania! Vince's prized possession. He is selling that under the table left and right, man. He is he is trying to suck out any penny he can make out of the name itself. He is literally pimping his WrestleMania name out. WrestleMania backlash? Really? You're going to use the name WrestleMania just so you can suck up some extra pennies from your audience? Because they heard the name WrestleMania in it? And what you're doing in the process is you're lowering the prestige of it. Trust me. Nobody needs to see WrestleMania Hell in a Cell or WrestleMania Money in the Bank. Anyway, hopefully you guys heard the second half of this review. I've been screaming and scaring people around wherever the fuck I'm walking right now. Um, (laughs) But hopefully you guys were able to at least hear my shit. If not, I'll find out in a minute. And I was just screaming to myself my SmackDown thoughts. Much love to you guys, man. What a crazy review. We didn't just blow out the speaker. We blew out the fuck with the mic. We blew out the fucking camera. So we got to find out what's up with that so we can we can have that rectified for Monday Night Raw. But much love and respect to all you guys. Just like I just showed you in this review, get amplified today, man. Whoop that ass. Coffees and ass whoopings. Think. Be. Live. Amplified. BC. I'm out, man. I'm getting another coffee. And I'm getting the fuck out, man. I think Jersey Shore today. What are you, It's supposed to be a little cloudy, but maybe the tan won't be the best thing. But I'm definitely going to be 90, 95 degrees, something like that, man. I'm going to hit the Jersey Shore. I got a little bit of business to conduct first. A little, just a little bit of business. And then hopefully I can make it to the shore around 2, 3 o'clock. We'll see, man. We'll see. I don't know. Business first. Ass whoopings, man. Priorities, people. Priorities. Ass whoopings. Deliver that shit today. All right, for real, I'm out of here. Check you.